Hi there, Jen here. I'm going to answer the question, should we be concerned about the safety of our nail polishes? For groundwork, I'll cover what goes into a basic nail polish formula and it might make a little more sense why these free from claims don't really make that much sense. Nail polish is traditionally made up of seven ingredients. Number one, film formers or resins. Key ingredients other than the colors to create a sturdy film for your nails. The second would be solvents needed to dissolve the film formers, which are solid by nature. So for example, ethyl or butyl acetates. The third type are plasticizers or softeners, and these are to make the product more pliable, less likely to chip with better nail adhesion. So typically they're small organic molecules that position themselves between the film former polymers to keep them from forming too hard of a crystal structure. In the fourth type are color additives or pearlescents, and this is probably an obvious one to you guys. Examples would be organic or inorganic pigments, for example, lake dyes on the organic side and oxides on the inorganic side, and also pearlescents such as mica. The fifth ingredient category would be your thick citropic rheology modifiers. So you want the thickness of the formula in the bottle, and also on application to be a bit thicker so that the pigment can stay dispersed, but less with an improved flow when you're applying it. And you can think of this as like the ketchup effect. So examples here would be silica or clay derivatives. Six would be color stabilizers, and these are to protect the color from, for example, light. Ingredients here you might recognize would be sunscreen ingredients, and then seven would be other, for example, preservatives, fragrance, claims ingredients such as vitamins. So that is the general makeup of your nail polish. So coming back to the question, should we be concerned about the five free or nine free or whatever free claims and fear mongering out there? Should we really be concerned about the safety of our nail polish products. To help us go through this, I am referring to an article in Good Housekeepings, the 10 best non-toxic nail polish brands for a healthy manicure. What makes a product five free from their vantage? So it contains no formaldehyde, no toluene, no DBP, no formaldehyde resin, no camphor. So just to put it out there, these ingredients aren't really ingredients that you need to worry about. For example, formaldehyde resin, it's very different than just pure formaldehyde and also pure formaldehyde at a low percentage that it's used in nail polish would actually be safe because penetration of ingredients, it's not really gonna happen. It's extremely hard for ingredients to actually penetrate through your nail and then again through the skin underneath. Toluene, so toluene isn't used anymore. So that doesn't really make sense. And the same thing with DBP, dibutyl phthalate. This has come up in quite a few of my videos already. There is currently one phthalate that is approved, which is diethyl phthalate. And that phthalate is demonstrably not endocrine disrupting. So then going on to nine free. So nine free includes a few additional ingredients such as acetone. So acetone you wouldn't want in a nail polish formula anyways because the formula wouldn't be very stable. Xylene isn't used anymore. And then parabens. Well, the parabens that are approved for use are actually demonstrably safe. There is a lot of fear mongering out there, but overwhelmingly it's misplaced. So one, the people that are putting this information out there obviously don't really understand the regulations because they include ingredients that wouldn't even be used in cosmetics based on regulations and also include ingredients that are regulated in a way to ensure consumer safety, such as parabens. They are regulated to ensure that they're going to be used at safe levels and only specific parabens are approved. The second thing that these fear mongering claims really demonstrate is the people that are making them very clearly don't understand formulation. This happens a lot. A lot of the fear mongering put out there are clearly by people who don't formulate products because they assume that ingredients are going to be used at a certain percentage in a way that doesn't really make sense and it's not really happening. The third thing that it shows and it kind of goes alongside everything that I've already mentioned is clearly these people don't understand basic toxicological principles such as the dose makes the poison. And to brands, I 
personally wouldn't support a company that uses this kind of marketing. The reason they do it is when you see it on a label, you make an assumption that the products that aren't free from these ingredients are going to be inherently bad. And that's just not generally the case. So I personally think that seeing these claims on a label, they're a little unethical and extremely misleading. Nail polish on the market is going to be safe. If you want more details about nail polish, on last week's podcast, Dr. Anke Ginsberg and I went through, well, mostly Anke, went through the topic in a lot of detail. So if you want a deep dive into the science of nail polish, then tune into that podcast. If you have any questions, queries, conundrums, or concerns, leave them in the comments and I'll try my best to get back to you with an answer. Thanks for tuning in. I don't know if this is going to be usable.